Hey, what's going on everyone? MacBoy here from MacBoy Productions. And you're probably wondering, what is happening? Let me tell you guys, recently a few of my viewers have asked me if I'm going to be doing a Snow Leopard versus Leopard comparison video. And everyone's been doing these, so I thought I should do my own too. But instead of me showing you what Snow Leopard has that Leopard doesn't have, I just brought my whole iMac beside my other one. So what you're seeing here is a 24 inch iMac on your left and a 20 inch iMac on the right. The iMac on the right is running Leopard and the iMac on the left is running Snow Leopard, which you can tell by their wallpapers. So I'm just gonna be running some tests between these different operating systems and showing you the difference between Snow Leopard and Leopard. All right, without any further ado, let's get started. Now, the two major changes that Apple made in Snow Leopard was one, in performance, and two, in the interface. Apple once again shocked us all with the release of Snow Leopard, telling us that it's twice as fast as Leopard. But how is this possible? The speed of Snow Leopard has increased drastically for mainly two reasons. One, much better multi-core processor support. And two, OpenGL, which accelerates the speed of high graphic applications. Now, there are more technical things in both of these reasons, but I'm not gonna get to them right now. Those are just the two ma major broad reasons why Snow Leopard is much faster than Leopard. So let's go on and do a small test between these two computers to really test the speed of Snow Leopard versus Leopard. So the small test that I'm going to be running here is opening up five documents with preview in Leopard and Snow Leopard. So here I've got five different wallpapers or five copies of the same wallpaper on each computer as you can see and uh, I'm just going to hit command O on both computers on both keyboards at the same time and we'll see which one opens up first. So again on the left I have Snow Leopard and on the right I've got Leopard. Let's see what happens. Three two, one. All right, now, there wasn't such a big significant change in that. Let me tell you why. Partially is because this 20 inch iMac has a smaller graphics card and a smaller inch screen. And this one has a bigger inch screen. So it takes more power to open up a document that's bigger than over here. Also, let me tell you why there wasn't such a big, big significance change was because I'm running Snow Leopard on this computer through my external hard drive on the back, not directly from my internal hard drive. And that is why there was not such a big significance on this test right now. However, in real life, Snow Leopard is in fact two times faster than Leopard. Okay, after completing the performance test, let's move on to the interface of Snow Leopard. Now in the interface changes, Apple specified on three major categories. One, the finder, two, the dock, and three, the expose. Now I do realize that Snow Leopard did kill a lot of applications on the Mac, including iStat menus, which is very important. And you know what? Personally, I think that's a good thing because it gets developers developing. They get up off their chairs and start to make it compatible. And while they do that, they actually enhance the application. So overall, Snow Leopard helped us all around. Apple worked quite a bit on Finder. The speed and the overall navigation of Finder has improved drastically in Snow Leopard. A feature that a lot of people love in Finder is this little knob at the bottom right hand corner, which allows you to change the icon size just by clicking and dragging it. It even goes all the way up to 512 pixels. Although this could be done in Leopard also by hitting Command J on the keyboard and opening up the application or the window preferences. This is where you could change the icon size manually, the grid spacing, the text size, and so on. Another feature that Apple added in uh, Finder was in the menu bar. If you click on the airport status, it will show you a little more options or a little more information about your notebook. It will show you the signal strength beside it and also if it's, if it's with, with a password or if it's open to anyone you want. Also, if you, hold on, if you hold down the option key and then click on the airport status, it will give you a lot more information than before in Leopard about your current network. It really took some time to Apple to customize and format the dock the way they really want it to look. Something I like about it is how the dock and expose interact with one another when switching applications. A feature that they added was in Stacks. You know what, in Stacks, in Leopard, it wasn't too stable. And you know what, if you click somewhere else, it was something wrong would happen, if it would go away. And you would always have this little feeling inside of you that if you really do click somewhere else, something would go wrong. And you know what, in Snow Leopard, they fixed all that. There's a lot more functionality in here. You can move around freely, and it's just not gonna be so jumpy at you. Another feature that they added in Stacks was folder views. Uh, if I go to my application Stacks right here, 
uh, you can click in a folder and it won't go to Finder. It'll actually open up the folder, the content of the folder in the stacks, which is a very nice uh, feature. You can also click back to go back to the actual folder that you were in uh, before that one. And you, there is also scrollable stacks. So you can just click and scroll in the stacks if, if you had a lot more contents than I do because I don't and I cannot scroll down at the moment. Here we go. Scrollable stacks, amazing. Something that I love about Snow Leopard is its new expose. This is so improved than Leopard, it's amazing. So let's just go down to the dock and open up a few Safari windows. Here we go. I've got about four and let's open up a few text and windows right there. I've got about five right there. So here we go. As soon as I hit expose, it is so much more cleaner, so much more viewable. Expose just spreads out the documents evenly around the page for you and the view is just much better. Something that I like about this is you can actually quick look each window if you think the text size is too small and you really want to focus on something. You just hit the space bar and it zooms in for you. If it's not what you're looking for, you just move your mouse to the right and it'll scroll up over there, scroll to the right, scroll down to a text edit window. No, that won't work. Again, hit the space bar to go back. Now let's say you want to go to text edit windows. Nope, 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 nope. It's just so much more cleaner, faster, and easier to use. Something else that they added in here was a spotlight for the application. So let's say you click on Safari and what happens is in the dock, Safari gets its own little spotlight and shows you that you should focus on this application. This is what you've clicked on and this is what I'm showing you. And then what happens is it goes into Expose and shows all of your windows in Expose. Now you say you have a window minimized over here in Safari and then you click on Safari. Will that window come up? Of course it will. It just shows up at the bottom and there's also a small divider and it tells you that that window is minimized. Also, it gives you the options to quit it, hide it, and then to keep in dock, open it, login, or show the application in Finder. And this works with any program, any application in your dock. And the most awaited application of the evening, QuickTime 10. Yes, when, yes, in WWDC 09, Apple gave us a quick sneak peek of QuickTime 10 and showed us some of the quick features that it has. And finally, it is here on Snow Leopard. I'm going to show you what it can do right now, QuickTime 10. As you can see, the icon has changed, of course, much better. And finally, on QuickTime, you are able to have your own movie recording, audio recording, and a very, very brand new feature, screen recording. This definitely shows the amount of work that Apple puts into their operating systems. All right, that's it for now. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. This is MacBoy from MacBoy Productions. Again, if you like that, please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe on this video and channel. And guys, over there to the right of this video, you'll find my Twitter, my blog, and my business email where you can contact me for any questions, concerns, comments, or suggestions. I'll see you all next time.